Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We are back at it with more bite-sized business advice. And I have I have the guest, the guest today, the only one. If you never listen to another episode, that's totally fine with me. We have one of my favorite human beings on the planet. And the only reason why I say one of is because my business partner and my wife will probably see this very clip on the internet. So uh, I'm not going to say my absolute favorite, but you know where you stand, brother. Way before we get into this, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. And I got to say, I love that intro, um, especially the whole matrixy background piece right there, because, you know, that's what I'm all about. I'm all about disconnecting amazing people from the matrix of what is to put what isn't so that we can put plug them into what is right. <laughs> yeah. Way made me watch the matrix uh, a couple months ago. Full disclosure. I don't get out much. He totally <laughs> messed up my world. And yes, he will unplug you from the matrix today. And we're going to trigger you a little bit. We're going to talk about how the root cause of all the challenges in your business is probably not what you think it is. And it's probably going to piss you off, but that's okay. We're going to fix it by the end of the episode. So just hang with us. We're going to piss you off a little bit and then wrap it up. So way let's, let's get to it. Let's get right to it. What is for most people, the root cause of most of the challenges in their business? Yeah. I, you know, and uh, the title basically says that it's, it's not what you think it is, but most people know what it is. They're just not really willing to own the fact that that's what it is. Now, our clients, the ones that you and I sometimes mutually share or the type of people that we would like to work with, they do embrace that. And when they do, life is amazing. Life changes. Right. Um, I work in the area of human optimization. And so I'm all about giving credit where credit is due. Where a company succeeds, the root cause is the people. Where a company fails, the root cause is the people. <laughs> you can blame systems and processes and technology and anything that's non-human all you want. But at the end of the day, it still requires a human being to execute. It still requires a human being to maintain. It still requires a human being to optimize. And the reason why it's triggering is because a lot of times as entrepreneurs, and you and I both know this, we will get ourselves to a point where we're stuck and we're avoiding the truth. And the truth is that we're part of the problem. And that's really what it is. I love starting off like, you know, I used to speak all over the world before the pandemic hit and everything. And I love the, 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 the talks that I would give where I get to start off saying this presentation will probably trigger you. So feel free to leave at any time, but recognize this. If you are triggered, that's a good thing. That means there's a amazing opportunity for you because the, the unconscious mind won't let you get triggered unless it's ready to let it go. Take that in for a moment. When you're triggered by something that is your unbiased, unconscious mind allowing yourself to activate something that you already know how to be triggered about so that in that moment, you have the best opportunity to let it go. So I am hoping that somewhere during our conversation today that you do get triggered because that's your mind saying, okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's let that one go because that one does not belong inside us anymore. Right. Yeah, I love that. And that there's, there's quite honestly probably nobody better at triggering people than... Uh, it seems like me recently, because my whole focus with with this kind of triggering is not to be mean or insensitive, but it's to open people's eyes, especially business owners, because like you said, we work with mutual clients. We work with clients who look the same, their businesses, the industry, the, the size, the structure, and they fall into these buckets of very common problems. The root cause of a lot of the challenges is always the people. It's either the leader or the team. Right. So when I go out there and I want to trigger people, if you will, not intentionally, but just disrupt the way they think, 
it's hard for people to digest that. So when you say it's a people problem, I'm curious as a, as a business leader, when we hear that we have the immediate reaction of saying, I knew it was my employees. They all suck. Uh, can you bring this back and say why we need to look in the mirror as well at the same time? <laughs> yes, because the people that have the greatest and the fastest impact on extricating a business from a challenging circumstance isn't from the ground up because there is a trickle down effect. And I got to tell you, leaders who are listening to this episode, if you are observing some kind of a weird, funky activity or behavior in your constituents or in your employees, or in your teams, guess what? That is literally a reflection of something that's going on in you. It's your company. If you own it, your people are part of it. You've established the vibe, the frequency, the harmony, if you will, or disharmony. But it starts with the leader. And that's why whenever we work with clients, whenever you and I work together and we are working with clients and stuff like that, we always start with the leadership team down. Change happens so much faster, so much more efficiently when we start at the top down. We used to start from the bottom up. Oh, God, that was a grind. And that's always been a grind. It's like, <laughs> so when I work, some clients of mine have children and they inevitably say, hey, wait, can you help our children, right? I said, only if you're willing to recognize that you have an impact on why they are where they are today. It's like, oh, sure. <laughs> and then when I get introduced to new clients that want me to fix their kids, I said, how willing are you to be part of that process? Oh, I don't have time. I don't. Have then we're not working together because the people under you, so to speak, are simply reflections. You recruited them. You set the tone of what it means to hire these people. So guess what? Your vibe is key. Your how well how optimized you are as a leader is key, and that's why we always start with the leader. And we optimize it. There's a ripple effect that happens, right? And this is a phenomenon that happens in nature too. I just had this conversation earlier today with somebody else. It's called nodal impact. Every human being is a node on this planet and how we show up will literally passively or aggressively, explicitly impact every other node, human being around them. And if you are seeing these people every single day, how you show up as a leader, how productive you are, how optimized you are is going to affect both consciously and unconsciously, your entire organization. There are sometimes, and you've seen it too, right? With your clients, all you have to do is shift the leader and everything else just kind of falls into place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because um, I, as a matter of fact, just had this conversation, um, which I shared briefly with you before we started recording, Yeah, is there's this subconscious almost fear or or just a questioning of of the ability of the leader and we're talking like seven figure, multi seven figure business owner. And I see right. this a lot. I'm sure you do too, where they just don't know if they have what it takes to get past the next level. And in this very experience, this is his fourth company taking to just over seven figures mm -hmm. in the last decade. And every single time it stops at the same point. So when we're talking about here, the, the topic of the episode, the root cause of your challenges, yep. talk to me about that. I mean, that's a pattern. Yep, that is absolutely a pattern. And me being a background in computer science and engineer, you know, UCLA people are like, why is he using our major doing this? You know, um, it's all about pattern recognition, right? And if you want to go existential on things, you know, nature in its fundamental state is chaos. And when it creates and develops things, that's that's naturally it's because a pattern emerges, and that's when creation happens, right? Before we were born and created, we we existed in chaos, but then we we. We came in, into an order of a zygote, right? So, um, so what happens is when we're talking about from a revenue standpoint, so now we're seeing a pattern, right? Every time he hits a certain threshold, there's a self-sabotaging component of either being catatonically, financially catatonic, or you just jump and create another company thinking that's going to solve the problem. When in reality, what's going on, and I did this in my older uh, programs, which is around prosperity work, which is that there is a container that we all we all become adults having. And if we don't um, understand what that natural container of safety is, 
so that we know how to pull the fence post out and expand our territory of revenue flow, prosperity flow, or what is, then we're always going to hit that threshold. And then we're going to like basically stay in that game and we'll self-sabotage. I had the same thing happen for a long time where, you know, um, my father was a corporate guy. And from what I remembered as my childhood, he, his, the most he's ever made in a year was like a quarter million a year, but then, you know, they, they couldn't promote him anymore and he refused to be promoted. So they just bonused him a bunch of stocks. But when I was a young kid, I didn't understand the whole point. So all I knew was quarter of a million. Well, oddly enough, for a long time, when I went out into the world and started making money, every time I went past a quarter million, I found some way to self-sabotage myself to fall under that limit again. Right. What you're observing here in this phenomenon with that example is so prevalent and happens so much. And we think that, oh, it's the wrong business. It's the wrong product. It's the wrong system. It's the wrong people, whatever the case may be. Yes. But the core problem is, is the tone you as a leader have set as the limitation for yourself. And what needs to happen is to one, recognize what, how that limitation has served you because it did serve a purpose at some point and how willing you are to let that go so that you can expand to the next level of existence, if you will, or success. So that's the trigger. You have to find the, the what triggers you, what's the root of that, and then get past it. So I'm curious when your company's name is Limitless Leader. Mm -hmm. So how do we become limitless? Because these they're there and it's really a matter of when you hit the limits and yeah. how you interact with them, whether it's selling the company, right. killing the company, whatever that may be. We yep. see that example a lot. So what is what is the series of steps? I know you have a very complex process, but mm -hmm. kind of just outline the steps for me to hitting that threshold, identifying yeah. it and getting past it. What do you do with leaders and leadership teams to help them optimize their structure? Yeah, and it ultimately starts with the leader because the leader will make micro decisions that will keep the company at a certain point. And how we do that, first and foremost, we have to get to the baseline of understanding how does how is this leader as a, an instrument or as a vehicle, because our, our technology that we use is based on physical law. So we have to look at the human being from a physical standpoint and how they are naturally designed to succeed limitlessly. Okay, This reminds me of, I just thought about, I'm going to create some more content around this, but I was driving and I was thinking, how do I best explain what we help people do? So one of my favorite things, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen is called a, a, a cleaver or a butcher knife, right? It's one of those. It's not a regular knife. That's it's one a of those. little serial killery way. <laughs> that's very Chinese. We use that's one of our <laughs> I watched my mom growing up using that. And and we all know like a, a butcher knife or a cleaver inside a, a kitchen is designed to do what? It's designed to cut, right? And sometimes it's to cut really difficult things, right? Because it's got a heft to it and it's got an edge to it and so on and so forth. But do you know how, what else I've used it for? Sometimes, you know, when it, how hard it is to kind of like, um, don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I made a comment before and you said, what else do I use it for? <laughs> so garlic. You know, it's hard to peel, especially yeah, when you yeah. get down to the skin. And the last thing you want to do is serve it when you're eating the, that really waxy thing. And peeling with your hand is kind of annoying. So do you know what I do? I put a clove on a side and I use the side of the butcher knife and I smash it. Makes it a lot easier because it's got the heft. It's got the it's got the area to do it. Do you know what I also use it for? Sometimes when I'm making a steak, okay. I flip it to the dull edge and I tenderize it. Right. Interesting. So this is a multi-use knife. Is it the best use of the knife, however? Think of an entrepreneur in the beginning when they're bootstrapping and they're starting up. They're, gonna, they're trying to be as versatile as possible. Now, let's say I have a kitchen and I'm making five dishes at once. Is it the best use of a cleaver to sit there and just smash all these, use the edge of it to smash all these garlic and to tenderize all these steaks? No, that's why they have tenderizers. That's why they have peelers that are dedicated just for garlic, right? When you get, when your company gets to a certain size and you're used to being that multi-purpose, multi-use cleaver, and you keep doing that, you're literally the bottleneck of the company's ability to grow. So what we want to do in the very beginning is, well, what is what is the instrument that you are that is the best utilization of you as a leader in this organization? Like I had a client that insisted he needed to be CEO, and that was what was literally what was keeping the company stuck. When we moved into client relations, because that's what he was really, really good at, 
His company grew. We put someone else as CEO. The leader, the owner had to get out of his or her own way. And he's like, well, I own the company. Shouldn't I be CEO? You could be anything you want in the company. You could be the janitor and still own the company. Whatever contributes best, the best use of you, as a lot of people in the in the industry like to call it, your zone of genius, we literally use our technology to scientifically elicit that from every human being to identify what kind of unique leadership style you are. Once you start to do that, that's how you become limitless. Think about that. There's things that you can do day in, day out that will never, will never exhaust you. Well, use that as what you do every single day in your business. Build your business around that as you as a nucleus of being able to do that one thing really, really well. Fill in the gaps with, as what you would do. Fill in the gaps with all those areas that you don't do as well, like tenderizing meat with a cleaver or you know, peeling garlic. And have someone who actually is really good at that do that. Now you've created limitless possibilities. I love this example because this I, it happens all the time. So the structure we use as you are familiar with, but for you, the listener, when we start working with a client, we usually start with some sort of a 90 day sprint to really just rock your world, get you in line and make sure you're focused and on the right path, get you that quick definable result. In that period, all we do is we want to focus on three core things that are going to immediately drive your business forward. And the pushback that we get every single time is, but I have so much to do. I have so many other things I need to do. And we say, no, you don't. You're cleavering. <laughs> Your word's not mine, but I'm going to use that analogy. But that's <laughs> what they think they have to do is they have to do all these things because they are that utility player. They're used to doing all of the operations. We say, right. no, you do these things. And if they continue to push back, I say, Go see way because I've had enough of your garbage and you need to be <laughs> optimized as a human being. So way, the, yeah, that is the absolute perfect example. But I'm curious. So when you when you do optimize somebody uh -huh. and they're they're in that position, is it possible? Like how many levels up can you go? I'm thinking when you're you're a solopreneur, you're doing everything. You're the cleaver. You're doing all the stuff. Even up to that past the seven figure range, that's where you're focused on being the CEO, being the leader. How many more levels can you get people to go? Like, is it truly limitless? Or do you start to say like your, your ideal role or structure in this company is really over here. You love sales. It's VP of sales. Like, right. Where do you take people? You mean after they get into their ideal situation? Yes. It really depends on that. It depends on their vision. You know, our, our main focus, uh, as you know, is that we help entrepreneurial leaders, uh, structure or get to a point where they can take one to two weeks off every single month every month right um and and that that proposal is actually an exercise in and of itself and so if you're listening to us i, I challenge you with that because if you're listening to us and say hey i would love that right because the next question i would ask well what you what would you do with that time because that literally is what keeps people from having that you know i had a client that says i would take a vacation every month and you would never get tired of it? No. Okay, let's let's do it. Well, three months later, I'm tired of it. I, I need to do something else with my time. And it's like, okay, well, what do you want to do? You don't want to sell your business. Can we focus on growing it? Sure. But now you have two weeks every month to just focus on what? Growing your business. That's it. And that's really kind of now not everybody goes through that. Some a lot of people go, Oh, I, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go on vacation this month, but next month I'm gonna completely focus on growing the business. I was like, perfect. So it just depends. It just depends on where they are, um, what their vision is, what they want to do. But at the end of the day, if you and I could free someone up to have two weeks off every single month to do whatever they want with that time as a leader of their business, that's the fun part. That's like, well, what are you gonna do? But it also could be a triggering part because <laughs> I've seen it trigger the heck out of people. It's like, I'm so useless. I'm so worthless. <laughs> I'm not working hard enough. I don't deserve this. That stuff gets kicked up sometimes too. <laughs> well, that goes, it goes back to the cleaver analogy because what is it designed for? It's to cut, like you said. Right. So when you optimize somebody or we're really before you optimize them, but you say, okay, two weeks out of the month, you don't have to go on vacation, but you have to do the CEO work. You have to focus on growing the company and being a leader and you can't do all the other crap that you're used to. 
it's when the the knife doesn't know how to cut because yeah. it's been so used to doing everything else that's where people start to get triggered at least i find when you tell them to do that stuff and they need that they need that trigger ultimately to knock them out of that cycle so yeah no i love that analogy yeah. because what you said right there just revealed something as well is that sometimes they say well i'm not that good at cutting i said you know why even though they are the cleaver of the butcher knife right because you were doing all these other things you never took the time to sharpen your blade yeah so now you're cutting with the dull blade thinking that you're not meant to cut and now you're like well i'm useless and then it gets to this the, the, and this is the dangerous part right for entrepreneurs if you're not paying attention if you're not doing the personal work and optimizing yourself on a regular because like me for example and you as well, probably i will never be without a coach or a mentor in my life ever again just because i know what happens you get stuck in this vortex because we have so many things that we need to do you don't sharpen your blade you forget how to use your blade properly and you're using it for all these random things next thing you know you're trying to build a house with your butcher knife because you can use a flat end to kind of nail things in now you're doing all these random things that have nothing to do with the optimal use of you. And you wonder why your business is stagnant. You wonder why you're feeling stuck. You wonder why you're feeling burnt out because you're doing double work and you're doing work that you really shouldn't even be touching just because you're, it's called adaptation. And human beings are so good at that. We're really good at adapting that's how people can get addicted to drugs which is a toxic thing for the human body we're naturally adapted we're naturally designed to be very adaptable but doesn't mean we should do everything that we adapt to because then we'll always be constantly in survival mode and you and i have seen it people who are making millions and there's and people are saying oh wow they made it but they're con they're still living in survival mode and that's what's keeping their company from going to the next level of limitless possibilities it's true. It happens all the time. If you were triggered, if you were provoked a little bit, or if you're like, oof, that's me. That is faux show me. <laughs> well, Wei's got a little gift for you. It's going to be in the description down below, wherever you're watching or listening. But Wei, tell me about this really quick, because um, I think it's a really cool start to just see where, where you are in this path to getting freedom, getting business freedom, and unlocking that next level of growth, both for your business and for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where it's not about, okay, you got to opt in. This is no opt in. You get it free. You don't even need to talk to me. Okay. But what it is, is something that we give to all of our clients as a way to do a quick little check in. It's a self assessment that's based off the indicators that we've observed in real time with our clients over the last 20, 30 years about how ready you are, how scalable is your business, how much time freedom is your business capable of providing you at this moment in time. It's a snapshot. So you can take, it's just 10 questions. We distilled it down. And then at the end of that, it'll calculate the score for you. So you don't even have to add it yourself. <laughs> and then you can just see where you fall in that self-assessment. Now, if you do want to dive a little bit deeper and just have a little meet and greet with me, there is a link there that if you want to have a chat, but, um, but, uh, but if you don't, that's totally fine. You can just, uh, I think the, the, the link and the, there's a code for you to kind of, you know, get in there. Uh, but other than that, that's 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 what that is. It's the business scalability and time freedom assessment, self-assessment. I love it. All that's in the description down below, the link with the code to get in. No emails required. I love that. No gatekeeping. Thank you, Way. Thank you for being here. This was fantastic. For you listening, I want to know. Put it in the comments. A, were you triggered? Like we gotta we gotta know. <laughs> were you triggered a little bit? We're sorry, but we wanna wanna wrap that up. But it's for a you. good thing. <laughs> it is, it's a very good thing, and we can lead you on that path to fix it very quickly. So that's that's the most important takeaway. But what do you want to hear from Way again? Because he, I'm positive he's going to be back. I'm going to be on his show very soon yep. as well. So we'll put the link down there for that if it comes out first. What do you want to hear? What is the challenge in growing your business and optimizing yourself, optimizing your people and your team? People touch everything in business. Yes, we're in a world of automation, but people run everything. Way can help you with that. He can help you with the humans, human op. That's what he does. Wherever you are, thank you. Make sure you subscribe. This is fantastic. Thanks for listening to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, and we'll see you on the